Good morning. morning. Greetings and peace in the name of Jesus, who is our suffering servant. The good doctor, Martin Luther, said this of qualified pastors when they preach. One, that they get up. Two, that they say something worthwhile. And three, they know when to stop. For those of you who don't know me, like 31, 32, 33 years ago, I used to teach fourth grade and did youth ministry, and yes, with um, Mr. McGee, so, so thanks, Mike, I think. Uh, talk to me before you talk, never mind. <laughs> but anyway, so um, I taught here and did youth ministry here, uh, and so it's a joy to be back. And I was thinking about what would be an appropriate sermon title uh, for today, being my first time to preach with you. And I have to be honest with you, I used to sit over there, like as a single guy, 31, 32, 33, 34 years ago. And if someone would have told me back then that one day you would have called me to preach here and there, I would have said, yeah, right. But I think God had a different plan. So I was thinking about sermon titles that I could uh, maybe have today coming back. So I was thinking of one that uh, 30 years of wander in the desert, okay? Or... When I was a child, I spoke like a child. Now that I became an adult, I speak like an adult. Or my favorite, could have been a sermon title coming back to you, is The Prodigal Son Comes Home. But I chose this. This is a theme to my seminary class, 2002 Fort Wayne Seminary class. This is a theme of our class. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. You see, in our daily lives, we like it when people, we like it when people's feet bring good news. They're beautiful to us. For example, I'm expecting, or we're engaged. Uh, my, my wife and I, were waiting for the feet that bring us good news that someone has accepted, that we've accepted, and they've accepted our offer to buy our home in East Peoria. That'd bring good news for us. Do you know what it's like when people bring you good news with their feet? You got a pay raise, you made the team. We know what that's like. But even in a more profound way, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. For I'm sure all of us have been in a hospital in the waiting room. And the nurse tells us that the physician and surgeon is coming in. And the physician and surgeon comes in after some really deep surgery with a family member and said, your loved one's doing fine. Or how beautiful are the feet when we have family members who serve in the military, and it's their feet and it's their face themselves that comes back. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news, but in a much more profound way in the ICU room. He was diagnosed with cancer in his terminal, and for the past four or five months, he was suffering with that, and the, the time for his life was soon to end. And so the family gathered on the fourth floor of the ICU unit, and there all the family came, and the parents were there, and they summoned the pastor to be there. And the pastor came up and greeted the extended family, and the, par and the parents asked the pastor, would you please come back with us to pray with my son? Uh, he wants to meet with you. And they said, my son, he hasn't been in church for a long time, but, but we believe that, that, that my son believes, and would you please come back and pray? And entering into the room there, which would, for the most part is his deathbed, the pastor saw him and grabbed his hand and said, it's been a very difficult past couple of months. And the son shook his head. And the pastor said, it must be really difficult. It's probably, your family's probably having a hard time. And the son's eyes teared over. And the pastor said, you've been thinking a lot about heaven. And the son shook his head lightly, yes. Then the pastor asked this, do you confess your sins that you have committed against God in thought, word, and deed? And the man shook his head and said yes. And then the pastor said this, do you repent of all your sins committed in thought, word, and deed against God? And the man shook his head yes. And then the pastor said, do you believe that God, by grace for Jesus' sake, will forgive you all your sins? And with even more glossy eyes, the man said yes. And the pastor said, would you amend your sinful life? And he shook his head. Then the pastor said this, Do you believe that through me, a called servant of God, you will receive the forgiveness of all your sins? And the man said yes. 
Then the pastor says, it's my joy to share that you are forgiven all your sins and heaven is your gift for you. And you can sort of sense a release from the entire room and a joy with the parents and the young man. Then the pastor said this, for God so loved you that he gave his only son for you, that whoever believes shall not die but have eternal life. And the pastor says, for the Lamb of God died for you. And you can sort of sense while there was pain, there was a sense of joy. My son's going to be in heaven. I will see him one day. There's a sense of joy that God has not left me. How beautiful are the feet of those who what? Bring good news. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news? Because this morning at the 930 service, Pastor Loring baptized a young man, Dalton. His ears, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he was baptized and heard the good news of Jesus Christ. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news to the person who is suffering over their sin, which has brought some harm and some anguish to those that they love. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news to the preschool child who was never brought in church and doesn't live in a Christian home and for the first time heard that Jesus died for them. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news for you and I who live in the muck and the junk of our daily lives and its routine. How beautiful are the feet are those who bring the good news of Jesus Christ. Well, that, that, that's what your stone says outside. Have you looked at it lately? It says this, Evangelische Lutherische St. Johannes 1883 Kirkes. Evangelical Lutheran Good News Church. Evangelische in German, good news. Evangelian in the Greek, good news. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news of Jesus Christ. How beautiful are their feet. You see, because you have called pastors over decades, and yes, even over a hundred years, who have brought the good news of Jesus Christ to you. So I'm going to ask you to go down memory lane with me. These are those who brought you the good news. Whether the baptismal font, whether the funeral home, whether in hospital visits or home visits with you, whether in confirmation class or Bible studies. Do you recognize any of them? I don't think any of you would know Detzer Zucker, but I mean, Spanish Keys, Habe Street, people in earlier services knew. Koenig was just sainted, is now with the Lord in glory, brought you good news. Many of you might remember some. Fabricia Brunworth, and who? Pastor Loring brought you good news. Who else? Sel Schmidt, Schiemann, and guess who's last? Yeah, right? How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news of Jesus Christ to you. Because it's pastors who God sends who brings the good news of Jesus Christ to you. This is what the good Dr. Martin Luther says about pastors about pastors to bring you good news. For God could have had princes and kings preach the word if the power of the word was based upon the position of a person. But I'm not a king or prince. But God uses common men for the efficacy of his word as it's not based upon them, but the promise of what? You see, God brings men who speak the good news to you not because of who they are, but because of who God is. And it's the power of God's word speaking through the pastor. And where do these pastors come from? Well, this is what the good Dr. Martin Luther says. Dr. Luther, Dr. Martin Luther says, For God calls his ministers from amongst the priesthood of all believers, for it is from the local congregation that God calls men with the aptitude, skills, and desires to preach and serve his flock. You see, just like Pastor Luring and Pastor Koenig, and Pastor Haber Street, and our Pastor Muse, we just come from local common congregations who God calls from amongst the priesthood of believers to bring the good news of Jesus Christ to you. Who bring the good news of Jesus Christ to you from this pulpit, the baptismal font, the communion rail, in your homes, in the hospital, funeral homes, or wherever. You see, I certainly hope, I certainly hope that, that no one expects that um, that like I, I come down from a big white cloud and wearing a white robe and I'm gonna fix all your problems. Um, that's not me. 
I have my own faults and weaknesses, and they're not very hard to see, and one doesn't have to look very hard to find them. But what I will promise you is I'll serve you with the same fervor and zeal that I have in all other congregations, including here, that will be a team member with Pastor Luring and our principal and the staff and with you so that we serve the purpose of the gospel together. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news of Jesus Christ. Because you see, what we never want to happen and see happen is this. What we never want to see happen is this. Oh, Mom, I don't want to go to church. Son, it's time to get up and go to church. Mom, I don't want to go to church. You can't make me go to church. Son, don't make me get the bucket of water like last week you were going to church. Mom, I don't want to go to church. I don't like them and they don't like me and you can't make me. I don't want to go there. The mother says, the last time I'm going to tell you I have to get up and go to church and I'm going to make you go to church. Oh, Mom, give me two good reasons why I have to go to church. One, because you're 55 years old and two, you're the pastor. Now get up and go to church. Now, hopefully that's never going to be the case here. But how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news of Jesus Christ. Because I am not like the pastor Brad Pitt, but I'm also not like Pastor Barney Fife. I'm not the clergy of Robert Redford, but I'm not the clergy of, of uh, Gomer Pyle. Okay? I have my own faults and weaknesses, but I'll bring you the good news of Jesus Christ. So, God calls from simple, humble men, from the priesthood of all believers, to preach the good news of Jesus Christ to you. So how do I see myself running this race? Well, I'm here to mature you. Jesus says, go and make what? Disciples. I'm here to mature you in the faith. How else? Teaching, preaching, administering the sacraments, visiting, equipping, and training God's people. That's how I see my feet running the race with you. So a few things about myself. I grew up in Euclid, Ohio, and I went to Shorehaven Lutheran Church. That was where I was a member of the priesthood of all believers. And from there, I was called to be a teacher in a DCE. Graduated from Concordia College, River Forest, Illinois, all the way back in 1984. And guess where my first call was to teach? Yeah, right here. And then in 2002, felt called to be a pastor, and I was a vicar not far from here, St. Paul Napoleon. And for the past 15 years, I've served as pastor at St. Peter's Lutheran Church in East Peoria. So that's about me. Oh, a few things about my family. Well, I married my lovely wife, Lisa, right here. May 28, 1988. Ted and Phyllis nicely are my in-laws, so we have family here. Now, my wife, Lisa, is back in East Peoria until our house sells. We bought a house here, which closes April 22nd, so she's definitely coming. I live with my son at the church home. He does a nice job keeping the place clean and cooking meals. I'm glad for that, okay? All right. Um, now, my oldest daughter, Michelle, um, she is finishing her doctorate in physical therapy. She's married to a police officer, so I have to behave myself. Um, they're not sure if they're coming this way. She graduates May 19th, and there will be all sorts of positions for her. My youngest daughter, Caitlin, is a public school teacher in Peoria. She teaches in the inner city of, of Peoria. Uh, she'll teach there to, the, to probably the end of May. Then she'll be at the LCMS camp in Springfield, Illinois, called Camp Silka. She'll be coming later this summer. My son lives with me. He's a wildlife zoologist, so he's applying for positions. Now, a couple other things you need to know is that I have not kneeled to bail. I have not joined the dark side of the force. I still root for the big three. Euclid Panthers, Ohio State, and Cleveland. I haven't done that, y'all. So if you're wondering about that, I haven't. I've never, I haven't changed allegiances. But you need to know that the seeds that, as Mr. McGee said, the seeds that you planted 30, 32, 33 years ago, some of those bore fruit and they're right now in front of you. What you gave me, now God's somewhat giving back or giving back to you. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Now, I usually close each sermon with a closing thought. So the closing thought is, how can they believe unless they hear? How can they hear unless they're sent? How beautiful are the feet of those who bring what? Good news. And I always close each sermon by all God's people say, and what do you say? Now, that does two things. 
First of all, that's a way for you to affirm that God has spoken to you, say amen. Secondly, if someone's sleeping next to you, sort of nudge them, say time to wake up, the sermon's over, okay? So it's one of those two things. Either way, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news, and all God's people say, amen. amen.